So in Matthew 10 and 15, when Yeshua said, I came not but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, who is he talking about? He's talking about the northern tribes of Israel. So there are two different kingdoms. There's the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom is the ten tribes. The southern kingdom are Judah and Benjamin only. So in 722 BC, they were scattered to the north, to Assyria. They were supposed to come back, and they never came back. So the southern tribes were scattered to Babylon. They were scattered in three different phases. So the first one was 605 BC. The first, second one was um, 597 BC. Third one was 586 BC. Um, they were gone for 70 years. They came back. The northern tribes, they never came back. So when Yeshua came, he said, I'm not come not, but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So that's why the New Testament was written in Greek. And it was supposed to go out to the northern tribes where they were exiled. And they were in the Gentile nations. So when we look at Ezekiel 4, we look at Ezekiel laying on his left side for 390 years for the transgressions of the house of Israel, north, northern tribes. And for 40 years for the um, on the right side for the house of Judah, um, we know how long their punishment was. So now when we look at Leviticus 26, um, when it comes to a curse for not obeying the instructions of our father and listening to his voice, it's times seven. So when you times 390 years, times seven comes to 2,730 years. Um, if you add that to the 722 BC when they were exiled, it comes to 2008. And that's when the, the blindness that was on the house of Israel comes off. That's why people's eyes are being opened to um, to the name of the Messiah, Yeshua. Um, that's why the scriptures are opening up to people. In these last days, his spirit is being poured out on everyone. So let's get into the scriptures right now and show you what he's talking about when he says he left the 99 for the one in uh, Luke 16 or Luke 15. Sorry left the 99 for the one he's came here for the lost sheep of the house of israel and uh first we're gonna go through some history i'm gonna show you exactly when these exiles took place when they were supposed to come back the curses put on them and then the the scriptures that go to this because everyone thinks that they're a gentile you know you have to be grafted into the house of israel through the covenants of promise to be back into covenant to attend the wedding supper so let's get into the scripture okay so I got a map here. This is what the two two houses look like. It was the house of Judah and the house of Israel. The state that you see over there right now is just the house of Judah. It's not Israel. The, the last 10 tribes were scattered, have not returned yet. Um, so let's go through Genesis, Genesis 17, 7. And it says, I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. Okay, so let's go to Luke 1, 72 through 73. It says, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant, which is the Ten Commandments, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham. So he established a covenant with Abraham with all of his seed. So Abraham had Isaac, Isaac had Jacob, Jacob was renamed Israel. His 12 sons is the full house of Israel. So his 12 sons are Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph. These are the northern tribes. Judah and Benjamin, those are the southern tribes. So God divorced the northern kingdom, 722 BC, and Yeshua ransomed them back. Okay, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing if you really look at it. So we find out in Deuteronomy 24 that a bride cannot remarry unless her husband dies signs a bill of divorce so when god sent his only begotten son into the world as we see in john three sixteen, everyone knows that bumper sticker verse but it's actually very important it was to save us it was because god divorced us um and he's coming to ransom us back and in his he, the new marriage is going to be with the son he's going to ransom us back so he came to abolish the sacrificial law that no one could keep that was held against us that was the ordinances put on the side of the Ark of the Covenant held against us because of the transgressions. Um, he took his role as a high priest, not through the order of Aaron, but the, through the order of Melchizedek. And he came to refresh the Holy Covenant, the Ten Commandments, which is what he intended the first time. 
That was what it was always intended. So the northern tribes were supposed to return after 300, 390 years, but because they did not heed to God's voice, his instructions, a curse was put on them. Just, just like in Leviticus 26, we do not heed to God's instructions. There's a curse put on you. You're blind. And the punishment is times seven. So when the southern tribes, they were trying to look for the, actually the best effort they did to try to look for the northern tribes, to try to search out their brothers and sisters was they translated the Greek Septuagint. They did this between third and sec, uh, second and third century BCE. Okay, that was about 100 years after the, the 10 tribes were supposed to return, but they did not. So let's go to Ezekiel 34, 6. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. Ezekiel 4, 5. For I've laid it. Okay, this is how we know how long the punishment is. E, 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 this is a great description in uh, Ezekiel. It says... For I have laid upon the the years of their iniquity, according to the number of the days, 390 days, so shalt thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel, northern tribes. And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah, 40 days. I have appointed thee each day for a year. So we know that seven is times, seven times is their punishment. Seven times 390 is 2,730. Um, you add seven, uh, 2,730 to 722, it brings you to 2008. This is when the curse of the blindness and the curse of God was lifted. And people can actually see this, the scriptures now. Like They can actually see that everyone's coming into the Torah instructions. They're finding out the true name of the Messiah. Um, they're finding out that they are part of Israel, grafted in through the covenants of promise. So Daniel 12.4 kind of shows us. A good example of the blinded being blind in part. So it says, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. It's because the blind, the veil is coming off, and we can see these things now, and it's a blessing. Uh, Matthew fifteen twenty four. But he answered and said, I am not but sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He is coming to find us and, and, and bring us back into covenant so we can make it to that wedding supper. James 1.1, 1, 1, this is future. This is talking to the future, <clears throat> to our generation. It says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Yeshua Messiah, to the 12 tribes, which are scattered abroad, greeting. Why 12 tribes? Because at this point, there's going to be a second exodus. And even Judah and Benjamin um, have been scattered, <clears throat> not through... The first exile, but they are all abroad, and he's going to bring them all back together. There's going to be 12,000 from each tribe. They're going to be 144,000, and then there's going to be a second exodus so great, the first one won't even be spoken of. So let's go to Luke 15, 4 through 7. But what man of you, having an hundred sheep, if you lose, lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. So because the northern tribes were scattered to the north and they mingled with the Gentiles, we that this is because of Abraham's promise to his seed that he would save his seed. <clears throat> now the Gentiles are allowed to be grafted in through these covenants of promise. It really is a beautiful story. So when we look at okay, Paul wrote seven letters to the churches: Rome, Corinth, Galatia, Ephesus, Philippi, Colossae, and Thessalonica. Um, these are actually different than what is in Revelations that John wrote down. Is he wrote. Ephesus, Smyrna, <clears throat> Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. He wrote it like this because this is to a future generation. This is speaking to the northern tribes. All of these churches are in Turkey. This is where the northern tribes were scattered. The, the, the book of Revelation was, was written to the servants. They're going to do the work in these last days 
to wake up the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So let's take a look at this map here. So the red lines are where the northern tribes were scattered. This is to the north, the Turkey region, all throughout Assyria, um, Nineveh. And then the bottom blue lines is where the southern tribes, Judah and Benjamin, were exiled. These are two different events. Actually, it's four different events because it, there was three different exiles of the southern tribes to Babylon. So, 931 BC, there was division from Israel and Judah, the two houses, okay? 722 BC, northern tribe was defeated by Assyria. God had his hand in every bit of that because of their backsliding. Brought them to Assyria and they were, they were exiled. So, the three exiles of the southern tribes, it was three different portions, three different times. 605 BC was the first siege by Babylon. 597 was the main bulk of it, and this was the siege. Um, you can find it in King, 2 Kings 24. Um, and then 586 BC, the third and final siege. And um, this, you can find that in 2 Kings 25. So, <clears throat> why they got scattered? I'll tell you right now, it was for worshiping false, doing idolatry, making Asherah poles, which is a Christmas tree. This is the same thing that people, Americans, are doing now. Um, we're gonna go through Jeremiah 10 in a second. <laughs> We're gonna find out exactly why, but they were they were they were they were doing the pagan ways of the 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 Gentiles. They were they were worshiping false gods, false idolatry, and is leaving God's commandments, His instructions, His statutes, and His judgments. So, uh, let's see. Let's just go to, straight to Jeremiah ten here. Um, <clears throat> Hear ye the word of the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. <clears throat> For the customs of the people are vain, and one cutteth a tree out of the forest with the work of hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with tinsel or silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers, and it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speaketh not. They must needs be born because they cannot go i be not afraid of them for they cannot do evil neither also is it in them to go, do good does that not sound like a christmas tree to you because it sure does to me this is a pagan custom that was that's been brought over america's pushed it to the four corners of the earth when it was actually banned in america until 1836 it was literally banned because they knew it was a pagan custom and um it, we just brought it back you know the tree equals vain worship, vain glory. Deuteronomy thirty two twenty six. I said I would scatter them to the corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Let's go to Jeremiah three six. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding is Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. Asher pole. They're making Christmas trees. Um, so <clears throat> let's go through God the instructions for giving a bill of divorce whenever they're through God's instructions in Deuteronomy 24. So it says, When a man hath taken a wife and married her, and it becomes and it comes to pass, she find no favor in his eyes, because he hath found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement, and give it to her hand, and send her out of this house. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and go and be another man's wife, and it shall be. And if the latter husband hate her and write her a bill of divorcement and give it, giveth it in her hand, and sendeth her out of his house, or if the latter husband die, which took her to be his wife, her former husband, which sent her away, um, may take, <clears throat> sorry, may not take her again to be his wife. After that, she is defiled, for there that is an abomination before the Lord. And thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. So Leviticus 26 tells us about the curse times seven. So it says, But if you will not hearken to me, and will not do all these commandments, and if ye shall say, No, you shall despise my statutes, or if the, your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning egg 
um, that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of, of heart, and you shall sow your seed in vain. For your enemies shall eat it, and I will set my face against you, and you shall be slain before your enemies. Um, they that hate you shall reign over you, and you shall flee when none pursueth you. So this is the part where it says, sometimes it says, And if you will not, not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. So this is the this 390 times 7. That's how we know the punishment for the house of Israel. So Romans eleven twenty five, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. That's 2008. Everyone was blind until... Yeah, everyone was blind until until that date. And I mean, not, not perfectly that day, but roundabouts. Okay, so let's look at where God divorces the northern kingdom. Second Kings 17. Um, <clears throat> and they left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. Man, if it doesn't look like, sound like what we're doing today, man. There's images everywhere there's idolatry everywhere everyone's got a cross hanging on their neck which is a very pagan custom way they are worshiping a christmas tree you say you don't worship it you're not getting down putting tinsel on it picking up gifts is such a pagan thing and america is going to be destroyed because of this so let's keep reading it says they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and use divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the lord to provoke him to anger man Okay, so now we're just doing abortions. We're doing exactly what they're doing. You say it's not to a, a pagan god, but the people that are running this abortion system, oh, trust me when I say that they're not worshiping the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It says, therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed, removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of the spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. For the children of Israel walked in all the, sight, all the sins of Jeroboam, which he did. They departed not from them until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight, as he had said um, by all his uh, servants, the prophets. So was Israel carried out of their own land to Assyria into, unto this day. Still there, well, to this day, they have not returned. These are the last 10 tribes. The biggest deception was 1948, creating the state of Israel. And everyone thinks that, oh, they found all the lost tribes. They did not. Absolutely not. They're scattered to the four winds till the end. Let's go to Jeremiah 3.14. Return, O backsliding children, says the Lord. For I am married unto, married to you. I will take you from one, one from a city and two from a family. I will bring you to Zion, and I will give you shepherds according to my heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Tell you what, that's not the pastors we got today. They are they are scattering. They are they are putting Asherah poles or Christmas trees right next to the altar in these high places, which are churches. Jeremiah three says they say if a man put away his wife. And she go from him and become another man's. She um, shall he return unto her again. Um, shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. And I saw when for when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and give her her a bill of divorce. Right there. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not and went and played the harlot also. So this is where the bill of divorce was, was given. And then Judah and Benjamin were doing the same things. The northern tribes were bringing these pagan customs into the land, into the holy land. Let's go to Ezekiel 3 verses 4 through 7. It says, And he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee unto the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not too many people of a strange speech and of a hard language, whose words thou canst understand, canst not understand. Surely 
Had I sent thee unto them, they would have hearkened unto thee, but the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Man, if that doesn't sound like every apostate Christian, they are just hard-hearted, stiff-necked, and do not want to hear the word of God. They just want to hear whatever makes them feel good. And it's not God's instructions, I'll tell you that. So, so we're right here, we're going to see they were supposed to return, but did not. Jeremiah 3.12, go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Isaiah 54, 5 through 8, <clears throat> for thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is his name, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall be called. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth. When thou was refused, <coughs> saith the God, for a small moment, for I, I have forsaken thee, but with, a, with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. Ezekiel 4, 4 through 6. Uh, I already did that. Okay, so let's go to Romans 7. Oh, yeah, okay, it's a good one. It says, For the woman which hath, which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband, so as long as, she, as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then if, while her husband liveth, she is she be married to another man she shall be called an adulteress but if her husband be dead she is free from that law so that she is no adulteress though she be married to another man wherefore my brethren ye also have become dead to the law by the body of messiah that ye should be married to another even to him who is raised from the dead that we should bring forth fruit to god for we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring, fruit, bring forth fruit unto the death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead where, wherein uh, we were held, that we should serve the newest of spirit and not the oldness of the letter. So this is the beautiful part about this story. God wrote a bill of divorcement to us. Okay, he came, the Messiah came into this world with all power of authority through agency of his father. Okay, he walked out a sinless life, and when he was crucified, when he died, that divorcement it was finalized. It was, um, he ransomed us back because he rose again as our high priest. Now we are in the engagement period of the holy covenant. This is what the wedding supper is going to be for, is those that are keeping the covenants of promise. He ransomed us back. This is, Satan thought he had us, you know, because God divorced us, and he had his way with us. But now, we are ransomed back through the blood of Yeshua, which is such a beautiful thing. So these are the covenants of promise. Ephesians 2, 12 through 19. That at that time you were without Messiah, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. Okay, covenants of promise real quick. Holy covenant, Ten Commandments, and the Rainbow Covenant to eat clean. Both given as covenants and promises to Noah and to Abraham. Okay. Having no hope and without God in the world, but now, with Yeshua Messiah, you who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Messiah. But he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of, part of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. Contained in ordinances. Okay, what does it say in Colossians 2.14? It says that the, 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 that's what was nailed to the cross, is the, the, the ordinances held against us. These are the, the law that was contained in ordinances. Uh, for to make, him, for to make in himself one twain new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereof, and became, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. 
for through him we both have we both have access to by one spirit unto the father now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of god so all right let's go to isaiah 44 verses 4 through 5 this is beautiful right here this is very prophetic of what's happening today when the curse is lifted and people can see it says they shall spring up as among the grass as well as by the water courses one shall say i am the lord's and another shall say himself or call himself by the name of jacob which is israel people are waking up seeing that hey you're not a gentile and Gen there's no gate for gentiles there's 12 gates into the kingdom and guess what christian isn't one of them muslim isn't one of them gentile isn't one of them you are grafted into the house of Israel. You receive a white stone and get your new name that you are grafted into. That is the only way you're making it into the kingdom of God. It says, Another shall subscribe uh, with his hand unto the Lord and surname himself by the name of Israel. Hosea 1. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, you are not my people. There shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land. For great shall be the day of Jezreel. This is the second exodus. Okay? Whenever I said that um, <clears throat> this is going to be the going back into the kingdom. This is so beautiful right here. So John 10 I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth him and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and am known, am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so now I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, and the sheep <clears throat> and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and they shall be one fold, and one shepherd, not of this fold. It's because it's latter days. He's bringing in everyone to this one fold. Ezekiel 34. As I live, saith the Lord, surely because my flock became prey, and my flock <clears throat> became meat to every beast of the field, that's to the Gentiles, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherds search for my flock, that's Judah. Um, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. And they just claimed the whole land for themselves. And just it's crazy. I mean, trust me, there's an evil family in Judah, and they are they don't care about anything. They're the ones doing Kabbalah. They're the it's it's bad. There's good ones over there and there's bad ones, but they did not search for their brothers and sisters, so they will be getting punishment for that. Jeremiah twenty three, <clears throat> verse two, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I, I am against or, therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people, ye have scattered my flock and driven them away. And have not visited them. Behold, I visit, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, saith the Lord. Let's go to Romans eleven, twenty five through twenty eight. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise unto your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. And <clears throat> and so also Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and he shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, the elect, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. That is so beautiful. I love that. So Ezekiel 34 says, My sheep will wander through all. All the mountains upon every high hill, yea, my flock was scattered upon the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. Jeremiah thirty one, thirty one to thirty four <clears throat> Behold the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant. This is the new covenant talk. This is everyone thinks we're in the new covenant. Nope. This is I'm gonna go through it right here. We are in the refreshing of the holy covenant. Yeshua came to nail the ordinances held against us, which is a sacrificial law. 
everything given up is Sinai, and <clears throat> no, he's, he's refreshing the Holy Covenant. So the word fresh in, um, in the New Testament, in the Greek, uh, I forget what it is, but it basically means refreshing. It means fresh. He's refreshing the covenant. We're in the engagement period. So, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Okay. This new covenant is only with the house of Israel and house of Judah. So saying you're a Gentile, you don't get in. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers <clears throat> in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. Wait a minute. So we can still sin right now, right? We can still transgress. I'm pretty sure that there's sin all over the world. So this is one of the uh, the the things that is going to be in the new covenant. So we're definitely not in, but let's see what else there is. It says, and I will be their God and they shall be my people and they shall teach no more every, uh, every man his neighbor and every man his neighbor or his brother saying, know the Lord, where they shall all know me. Wait a minute. I have to teach this daily. I am battling people on who trying to help them find God. But if that is not what's going on right now. We're not in the new covenant. We're in the refreshing. Um, From the least of them to the greatest of them, saith the Lord, I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. Can't wait for that day. John 10, 27, 28 says, My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Uh, verse 16, it says, And other sheep I have, which are, oh, I already read that. Ezekiel 37. So this is where the two sticks are <clears throat> brought back together. This is where the two, the two houses are brought back together. It says, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it, for Judah and for the house of Israel, his companions, and take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and, it should, and for all the house of Israel, his companions, and join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. This is when he's bringing them back together. This is this is after the second exodus. He's bringing all the tribes back together. That has not happened yet. Jeremiah 3 says, in those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the, to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto their fathers. Second Exodus, they're coming from the north. Both houses, okay? Judah's outside too. I mean, there's parts of them still over there, but there's a lot of evil family over there too. Jeremiah 23, verse 3, And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of the countries whither I have driven them and i will bring them again to their folds and they shall be fruitful and increase revelation 21 12 through 13 it says and had a wall uh great and high and had 12 gates this is showing that there's 12 gates to the new, new jerusalem and it says and the gates 12 angels and names written thereon which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And on the east, three gates. And on the north, three gates. And on the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. I didn't see, I didn't see any Gentile gate, did you? Definitely not. So when you follow the lamb where he goes, you take heed to his, his, his warnings. If you keep his commandments, John 14, 15 says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the father will, will give you another comforter, even the Holy Spirit of truth. Okay. All throughout the scriptures, keep my commandments. It's simple. It's not grievous. And if you do this, you get to go to the Revelation 19 supper. It says, and he that, and he saith unto me, right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. So, in closing, anyone calling themselves a Gentile, anyone saying that the commandments of God do not pertain to you, I, this is a warning to you. You, are, you have to be grafted in or else you will perish. We are in the end times right now. And 
following these pastors that are telling you everything was nailed to the cross or you're saved by grace, which grace doesn't mean a merited favor. Grace is divine influence on the heart. It's conviction to obey. It's a free gift, lest any man should boast, because it's a gift from God. He gave you this. It's his spirit. Okay? And when you obey his commands, as John 14 says, then he will give you the second comforter, the spirit of truth, which is, teaches you all righteousness and brings remembrance to everything he said. So please take heed to this message because <clears throat> there's destruction coming on this country and it's going to be bad. Uh, and, I, and if you love God, you love your children, you know, love your family, you will keep his covenants of promise. Eat clean. Leviticus 11. <sighs> keep the Ten Commandments. Love you guys.